Hello again. Since the death of the supposed convert to Christianity in Liverpool, stories are emerging which suggest that his adoption of a new religion was not a freakishly unusual event at all, but rather part of a trend. Most churches in Britain are in decline, which is sad. True, some of the Pentecostal ones attended by Africans and Caribbeans are flourishing, but the ordinary run-of-the-mill Anglican, Methodist and even Catholic places of worship are often moribund. The congregations at many of these places have an average age of about 102. There are exceptions, of course, which are those in areas where there is a decent religious school run by either Catholics or the Church of England. Some churches in such areas have a vibrant, family-oriented feel about them with lively Sunday schools and packed family services and young people falling over themselves to volunteer to help around the church. There are even creches so that young mothers can worship as well. This is, of course, all part of a middle-class racket. For many church schools, it's necessary, if you want to get your kid in, to have a letter from a priest saying that you and your kid have been attended for at least five years. This means that you must hit the ground running and start, if possible, before the child is even born. Ministers, of course, know all about this, but since it livens up the church, they don't really mind. Parents fall over themselves and volunteer to clean the brasses, arrange the flowers and run the creche. You have to make sure that the priest knows you when it's time to apply for little Tarquin to go to St Cuthbert's Secondary School. So the way to do that is to make it very obvious that you are there in the church. Many parents also make cash donations to the church, which is also helpful. So although they know that these people are only faking it, the church's concern don't mind all that much. I was viewed with great suspicion at my local church because of this business. Although I'm not a Christian, I wanted my daughter to grow up knowing about God and to associate with God-fearing people. Had we lived in an Arab country, I would probably have started taking her to mosque, but since we were in England, the church seemed a better bet. When we lived in Tottenham and she was a baby, I used to run the creche in the friend's meeting house there, the Quakers. Then when we moved to Essex, I started taking her to the Methodist church and she attended Sunday school there and also joined the Girls' Brigade, which is a Christian youth organisation. Then when she was 10, I thought it time to branch out a bit and introduce her to other faiths. This entailed praying at a Hindu temple, uh, the one in Neasden in London, uh, going to mosque, a Catholic church. I also took her to a very high Anglican church, which was so high it was indistinguishable from a Catholic place. She took to this and asked to start attending this church rather than the Methodist one. So it was that we became regulars there. She was baptised and became very devout, every Sunday processing into church behind the priest uh, in fancy dress and carrying crosses and all the rest of it. I began running the youth club there when she was 11, and this led to the gravest suspicion on the part of other parents. My daughter, of course, didn't attend school. She hadn't attended uh, primary school, and they naturally assumed that my helping out at the church was part of the scam so that I could get a letter from the priest to let her go to Davenant Secondary School in Loughton, which is an ecumenical Christian school. When it became clear that this was not what I was after, people became quite concerned. They simply couldn't understand why any parent would attend church and then go along on Sunday evening to run the youth club unless they were getting a school place out of it for their kid. I later learned that some parents thought that this might mean that I was a paedophile. <laughs> Imagine a churchgoer helping out just for the sake of it. Of course, I did have an ulterior motive, although it wasn't anything as obvious as paedophilia. 
Like all home educators, I was always on the lookout for ways to find opportunities for my daughter to socialise, and running a youth club which she could attend seemed perfect. I was reminded of all this when I heard of the Liverpool bomber. He attended church with the ulterior motive of being granted the right to stay in Britain, and it seemed that there were many more like him. It's something of a racket, like those that go to church to pray for a decent school place for their kids. Some of those associated with this particular fraud have even gone to the length of having crucifixes and images of Our Lady tattooed on their bodies as visual evidence of their faith in Jesus. Of course, such an action genuinely would put a person at risk if they were to end up going back to Iran, where apostasy, that is, abandoning Islam for another religion, carries a death penalty. Let me read out a bit from this morning's Telegraph. I give a link in the description to this video, uh, but since it, there's a paywall sometimes on the Telegraph, it's probably easier if I just read out the relevant part. A Birmingham hearing in 2018 allowed an Iranian man with amateur tattoos of a crucifix Jesus and the Virgin Mary to remain in the country, despite an earlier hearing concluding his conversion was false and images were obtained for the sole purpose of enhancing his chances of securing his asylum. He was allowed to stay on human rights grounds because he cannot be expected to remove or cover up the tattoo to avoid persecution. I think that's what they call a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's a bit more. Last year, a 26-year-old Iranian who said he had converted to Christianity and fled to the UK was allowed to stay because the judge sitting in Manchester found he has a mark of faith, a large tattoo. The case in which a clergywoman told how she was satisfied his conversion was authentic illustrates how some churches have enjoyed a boost to congregation numbers due to the number of asylum seekers looking to convert. I've been asking around about this uh, in the last week or so, and I've found it's definitely a thing. I suppose that it gets more people into churches, and if it makes the places look a bit more lively, there's no motive for the priests to object. Many ministers these days are, in any case, particularly in the, the Church of England, horribly left-wing, and they secretly support the idea of amnesties for illegal immigrants and open borders and all the rest of it. So uh, encouraging fraudulent conversions probably ties in very well with all this trendy liberation theology.